Hello, hello. We are back again. This has been an amazing, amazing day. Thank you so much for joining us once again. I am Jennifer Bridgeforth, and I am here sharing the wonder and the joy of this I Am That Women movement, retreat, and experience. This amazing, powerful woman who is seated next to me. I'm so honored to be able to sit with the beautiful, powerful Latia Vaughn. How are you, my love? I'm excellent. Wonderful. I think I just raised the roof and I realized <laughs> I just aged myself. Um, so I'm gonna retract that raising of the roof. But yes, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited that you are here. We have been doing these quick interviews <coughs> with our speakers as they come off stage while you're still in that moment, while you're still in the power, while you're still in the inspiration of it all. Um, there were so many things that I wrote down that was connected to you speaking about being, or us being ready for next. And one of the things that you talked about was some actions connected to the wind. For those who have not had the benefit of being here, what is the wind? Why is it important to be in agreement with that wind? Mm. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, they got me fresh off stage, okay? So my throat's <laughs> a little bit dry, but oftentimes we don't realize how much we repel winds because of subconscious behaviors, belief systems, that have been embedded in us. Mm. It's like you always say that I want to have something, but it always feels like something is stopping you from getting to it. Mm. And so in terms of accepting the win, um, that's a powerful point in the different stages of receiving the win. So we talked about um, visualizing the win, right? Seeing the win, uh, thinking on the win, mm -hmm. speaking the win, feeding the win, right? Yes. Yes. And then finally accepting it. And I think it's that last stage that accepting the win actually sets you on the trajectory. Yes, sets you on the trajectory for back to back wins. And that's oftentimes, this can be in the bloopers, so excuse me. <laughs> yes, yes. We're doing real life things here in the moment. This is this is the action. This, this is, is the, the this action. is the action that you don't see. Yes. Is the is the sipping of the water. Yes. We're doing mm -hmm. all the things today. Because this man right here, this powerful man that's behind the camera, he's probably going to wave at you in a second. Mm -hmm. This millionaire. Amen. I'm just putting him on the spot. I'm talking to the camera, but I'm really talking to him. Mm -hmm. He knows. He knows what this is. It's all over him. Okay. He'll tell y'all who he is in a second. Okay, it's my last sip. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Um, so we don't realize that we repel the winds. And so we have to learn in the season to learn how to accept them and nourish them so we can be in a season of back-to-back -back wins. How do we identify it when it comes? You know, wins come, okay, well, let's start here. Our perception is everything. The way we view life is always based on the way we think about life and the way we think about ourselves and our beliefs. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we don't even recognize the wins, the divine moments, the opportunities, the people to connect to. I feel like I should talk to this person, I don't even know who she is, because our senses are dull, our spirits are dull. Mm -hmm. Do you know rats, it's our discernment, even rats can discern a tsunami or an earthquake up to three weeks, two to three weeks before it even comes, because they're so connected. They're so connected to the ground. They're so connected to what's around us. So in life, we're so distracted mm -hmm. that our senses are dull, so it's hard for us to recognize the wind. Wow. That's powerful. Um, another thing that you talked about is that we as women uh, can be identified as a world that is within a world. Tell us a little bit more about that. So... So I used to want to be an astronaut, so I'm a, I'm a little bit of a nerd. That's okay. I'm a sexy, fine one, though, okay. You are. But, um... I used to think I lived, or I was sourced from Ganymede, oh, one of the planets. On, oh, yeah. Yeah, one yeah. of the moons of Jupiter, well, so, well, yeah. you know that they actually found, scientists have found, that we are made from star dust particles, literally. Literally. 
And so every possibility is around us. Right. And so when you realize your power, that I have the ability to create in my own sphere of influence, in my own world, in my mind, in my heart, in my spirit, now I'm able to connect and collide and shift to other worlds to dance, to yes. interact, to grow and to have more wins with. So yeah, we are a world within a world. It's huge, it's beautiful, it's, it's infinite. We are infinite. Yes, the idea of that is so large and so grand and so significant because of some of the words, just like you said, that we have a tendency to numb ourselves and limit ourselves. How do you connect or share that information with your audience in a way that helps us to recognize that we have the possibility or the grandness of being a world unto ourselves? Yeah. Um, well, I think it starts by um, shedding the layers that we have. Um, we hear that all the time, like we're like onions, you know, it's, it's, it's not cliche, it's really truth. Um, I think the more we discover about ourselves, um, the more possibilities that begin to erect simultaneously. You start to learn new gifts, you start to learn new styles of communication, you start to even have new dreams. Um, but I think that we have so much crap covered up on us. Mm -hmm. Pause. Pause? Okay. Boom shakalaka. Right. <laughs> Nick knack patty whack. Yeah, give it, but no, give, give it a bone, okay? right? <laughs> but no, but, but seriously, uh, I think the more we discover about ourselves, and sometimes we're afraid to what we're gonna discover because we don't want to sit beside ourselves mm -hmm. or sit alone with our own thoughts or confront some of the things that we need to heal from. Mm -hmm. But the more we discover, that's the point, the more you begin to erect new dreams, new thoughts, new visions. And when that happens, new possibilities start to rise in the what ifs. And then that's when you be able to evolve in, in what you're supposed to be next. And much of that work seems to come in a space where we're empowered to make choices. Yeah. And one of the things that you said on stage was a connection between indecision mm -hmm. and disobedience. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the connection between those two. So um, the, the part we're talking about is uh, being indecisive. So sometimes we're so afraid, especially those of you who are out there that have multiple things you wanna do, multiple dreams, and sometimes they're, they're not even connected. Like you wanna do this over here and I wanna do that over there. But what ends up happening is over time, because you're so afraid of picking uh, a door, you don't pick any door, and both leads you to the same result, which is living in the land of indecision, and and it connects to disobedience because when God tells you to go, or if God is telling you to move or to grow, it is still allowing fear to keep you stagnant, mm -hmm. and that is when we become confused and it feels like we're kind of floating, don't know which one to do, because our spirit wants to expand, especially as women, the feminine spirit naturally wants to expand mm -hmm. the masculine spirit naturally wants to protect its territory but right. women we want to expand and multiply so when you feel like you want to grow into these different areas but you keep constricting yourself it's spiritually going to frustrate you right right so in in those spaces particularly for those of us who have had experiences or situations where there may be a multiplicity of things that we want to do or that we feel we are called to do. And culturally, sometimes you will get discouraged from doing that. People will say, well, you know, you can't be a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. and a ma That's not how that quote goes. Right, we'll right. do that for another day. Yeah. Um, but we have been conditioned to believe that being a multidisciplinary yeah. in many things is a problem. Um, it's a lack of focus or direction. So for those of us who have been gifted mm -hmm. with more than one avenue, and those mm -hmm. avenues may or may not overlap, yeah. as we discuss about the launching space or the opportunity to kind of start right where we are, mm -hmm. begin somewhere, yeah. what would be your recommendation of where that beginning should kind of leap from yeah so if we're connecting to people that have multiple visions they're you know uh multifaceted i would say and it's, it's you know not so you jack of all trades and a master of none but i would say we have a tendency to 
build like this, right? So I'm doing five different things at the same time, and it keeps you on that same playing field, which means you have a little bit of sales here, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but it keeps you on that lower level, okay? Mm -hmm. But what I would say, if I had to give a, just a nugget of wisdom, is to build up and then out, and then you build up and then out, which means having a focus on a door, and when you build up, that will lead you to another door to build out. So that's when you have from your TD Jakes to your Jay-Zs to your people that have started in one discipline because they just, it's just just pick it and stick it, okay? Just pick it and stick it. And then- it Pick it and out. stick yeah, it. Because we don't give ourselves a chance for it to grow. Give your dreams a chance to grow. And oftentimes when it does not go the way we want to right away, we call it rebranding. When you really gave up on the first door, okay? Yeah. Build up and then out. You get higher, you get more influence, you get more financial capital, you can build out more, and then next thing you know, you have a huge empire and a building that is tall and massive, but you're trying to build so much at this first level. Get solid in one, pick it and stick it, build up and then out, that's what I would say. So the foundation, build a foundation, allow the strength of that foundation to build others. Yes, I love that. For you, for me, and for us. Thank you so much, thank you sisters. For thank me. you so oh, is, much. You raise the roof again? Whee! No, we'll do a little dance. A little dance. <laughs> hey, thank hey. you guys so much. Thank for you so me. much you for being. So beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, we're gonna you. hug you now. Of course, oh, I'm come, come, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I'm so beautiful. Thank you. I'm not gonna keep. I know you're gonna still rise. And still we rise. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been an amazing, amazing segment. We will have more information, more inspiration coming forward. In the meantime, make sure that you are following the I Am That Woman movement and make sure that you are that woman too. Take care.